we got our hands on one of the most viral craft kits out there. Yes, Crayola Paint Maker is a viral craft kit. For those of you who don't know, Crayola has a paint maker kit. Yes, similarly to the marker maker kit, which was absolutely phenomenal. If you want to watch that video, I will link it down below. Where the goal of that craft kit was to actually create your own colors and you have blanks of markers. It was really fun. Again, I will leave the link down below. But, 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 but. This one here, you see it says new on the top left corner, is the newest paint maker. Now, this was previously a kit that was out, I think, in 2012. Yes, this is an 11 year old kit that is apparently new again and viral all over TikTok. More specifically, it got 34.3 million views. Yes, 34 million views. That is like Mr. Beast level craft kit here. And 3.2 million likes. So there's a lot going on here, but basically, if you can see, the idea behind this kit is you get tiny little strips of color. This is really interesting because I've never seen color strips. Although, hang on, let's pause this video. The box itself shows that it has paint strip technology. It's almost like it's known everywhere else. It's like paint strip technology. And then they expect people to be like, oh my God, I've heard so much about paint strip technology. I definitely want it. And as you can see, the person takes the blue and yellow strip, puts it inside the paint solution. And this is the fun part. Look at that. We have a mechanism that mixes, goes like you see in the home heart. Look at that. We still do see chunks in there. So I'm going to be curious to see what that looks like. Okay. So they made a green. Let's see how gross this paint is. That is transparent. Parent. That is not good quality paint. It is Crayola though. Can't expect too much. It's, you have to start down here with Crayola. Don't have your expectations up here because it's gonna break at your heart. We can't afford that. You can't just break at your heart and you cry because of Crayola make you cry. Right, right. Just not a good thing. But yeah, the box does show that we have a shaker for the paint itself. So we're not only going to be making Crayola paints, but we're going to be trying a viral hack to make your paint even better. So this hack's been going everywhere where you basically use cornstarch solution inside your paint and then it's going to be a thicker, nicer quality. Is it true? I don't know. We're gonna find it out together. So not only are we going to use the kit as is and see if it's viral for a good reason and whether it's worth your cash or if it goes. If the Trash. Because this is $30. So let me know in the comment section below, do you think this is going to fulfill the viral reasons and it's going to be good or if it's going to be poop de poop de poop de poop de poop de poop. I'm very curious on your opinion. Side of the box again shows a cute little dino, but the quality is pretty questionable. In the back, we're seeing basically everything that we're promised, but I'm very excited to try the color chart and if the mixing actually follows that chart and if it's true. And the other side of the box tells us that it's a very simple maker. We add the paint base, add the colors, and then shake it up. Oh, and by the way, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe because we do all sorts of weird, wacky reviews and mystery boxes. I'm actually really excited to see whether or not this craft kit can be leveled up because if we can turn Crayola paint into good quality paint, well, then you, you don't have to spend too much to level up a little bit. So let's see what we get inside. All right, sharp pointy thing, I definitely know you want to be the center of attention. Let's stop it. And so here's what we get inside. What the heck? Okay, now, I don't know what's going on here, but you can see that we get the shaking mechanism thing. So it's supposed to do like us all. But let's take a closer look at the machine itself and you'll notice that there's a lot of scuff marks. It looks a little gross and oily even though it's not. It just looks very damaged for some reason and yes this kit is new so I don't know what's going on. Why does it look so vintage? Is this the vintage one? Hang on let's check the box. I think I got sold the vintage one. <laughs> Oh no! It says 2014. What the heck? I got this from Walmart. Walmart, did you just sell me a vintage kit? <laughs> Guess I need to redo the intro. Today we're going to be reviewing a vintage kit from 2014. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm starting to get worried because we need to see what the base of the paint looks like and if the color strips will actually still work. Hopefully that's the case. We also have the base that shows us where the color strips are going to go and I guess this is basically where we're going to be organizing everything. And then we have the paint holder. I have to say it's kind of cute because the shape is like a paint palette. The, the thing, kind of cute. And it looks like we have quite a bit to hold on to. 15 actually. And then let's put our trusty felt over here because the next thing is basically transparent. We have a bunch of paint pots. So I don't know how many we have, but I'm guessing at least 15 since we have 15 holders. Really hope this is gonna work. Now we're working with a vintage kit. I mean, care. And then here we have all the accessories. So this here is going to be our paint base. Now this is going to be nine years old, I think. I'm not sure, but let's find out. Oh, that does not look good. That is really, oh gosh. Hello? Oh no. Oh no. I'm not too worried because basically this is white paint, I believe. It's just the Crayola formula. Worst case, we can use my own white paint. The most important thing is that the paint strips work. That's, oh gosh. Let's see if we can salvage this. We're gonna try it anyways, cause that's just how we roll. I mean, it sounds goopy, we'll get to that. Then we have a bunch of accessories that we'll figure out what they are later. A paint brush. This has to be vintage, cause this is a little better quality than what they used to be. So here's the brush, and it's actually not plastic. This is a wooden base. I'm impressed. Vintage Crayola was way better. They actually had standards. <laughs> we also get the nozzle for the paint, but we'll see if that's even useful anymore. And then the star of the show is the color strips. Now they look to be sealed, so I'm going to go ahead and guess that they should be safe, but we're gonna find that out pretty soon. But in the meantime, I'm going to look over the instruction sheet. So we do have, oh, we get paper. Okay. Uh, we have, oh, there we go, the color mixing guide. So here we have the guide that tells us how many strips of each one will give us the color. Interesting, we need five blue strips to make a pure red. Okay, that's, oh, really? Only four of the red and, wait, what's this? My, one blue, I think. So my guess is that when it's this side, it's how many of the reds, how many of the yellows, and then here's how many of the red, I believe. So we're gonna look at this side to guide us. I'm pretty sure. I believe so. And then we have the labels. And of course, as usual, Crayola's black and white instruction sheets. That is, that is a whole catalog right there. So let me read on how to put this together and then we're gonna try this out. So the first thing we're going to do is add the little clips on each side of the base of the machine because it looks like it's going to extend further on either side. Oh yeah, this is really hard. Yeah, this is really hard. I didn't think the clipping part would be the part that I would get stuck on, but come on. How do I get you in? Oh my god. Let's try with a Crayola pencil. Okay, there we go. Holy shrimp, that was not satisfying, not one bit. Then we're gonna clip them in. And you can see all the pieces put together. It kind of looks like a spaceship. So I don't know. If we're, I don't know where we're taking off. We'll see where we're taking off. If it's going to be into amazing depths of the universe where we get to explore our creativity, or is it going to take us down to the underground, where it's going to be fiery forever the depths of hell? <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Check the link down below for 15% off your Raycon purchase. Um, Salty, did you happen to take my earbuds? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna need those back. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna need those back. Looks like I'm gonna have to get a second pair. So now is the perfect time to let your grains know that you don't have to spend an arm and a leg to get amazing audio quality from your earbuds. And yes, I'm talking about today's amazing sponsors and huge supporters of this channel, Raycon. For those of you who don't know Raycon, these earbuds are absolutely phenomenal. Not only are you getting amazing sound quality and essential smart tech listening features, thanks to Raycon, you're paying half the price of other premium brands out there, which means if you need a second pair as a backup, you're still saving money. And with all the cool sound customizations, whether you 
you like to jam out to some really cool music, or listen to one of your favorite podcasts, or even get really absorbed in your favorite audiobook, Raycon's different sound profiles really has you covered. And Raycon knows that saving money is really important for you. That's why they offer buy now, pay later options, and you can spend as little as $18 on checkout today. And just for a couple of bucks, you get two years of product protection insurance, free domestic shipping, or a flat rate for international. And if you're not a fan, that's totally okay because they have free and easy guaranteed return. And it's no secret that Raycon earbuds are absolutely my favorite. Not only do they have eight hours of playtime for the everyday earbuds, but I kid you not when I say that these are the only earbuds that do not fall off my ears. The custom gel tips are just perfect. They really do stay in place and I absolutely adore them. They do have noise isolation feature, but also an awareness mode feature. There are just so many amazing things about the Everyday Earbuds by Raycon. So if you want to know more, check the link down below or go to buyraycon.com forward slash nerdycrafter to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Again, the link will be down below, pinned comment, or go to buyraycon.com forward slash nerdycrafter to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Thank you Raycon for being huge supporters of the channel and sponsoring a portion of today's video. Now, according to the instructions, this is where our bibbies come in, the color strips. So I'm not sure what to expect. I hope we're not going to tear this apart. So let's go very gentle. Oh gosh. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So we're going to go in with some scissors. Hopefully we didn't cut anything up. It's so weird that they didn't divide it. Okay. It reminds me of these Listerine minty breath strips. Is there anything else in there? No. Come on. Hang on. I kind of want to see nothing. Okay, nothing else is in there. Oh wow, these are much thicker than I expected. Interesting. What? Okay, no, it's not thicker. It's just they're stuck to each other. Okay. It's kind of weird that they didn't put only reds together and only blues together, only yellows, but listen to that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and divide each of these into their respective strips and colors. And then we're going to place them into the compartment separated by color. I don't know why they did that. I guess part of the fun is to organize things. Not for me though. I like things already organized. So I counted each strip and we get one, two, three, four, five. So we get five batches of five strips. So we get 25 of each color. So in total, we have 75 strips. Now I'm not sure if that's going to be enough to make all the colors, but there's only one way to find out and that's the math. Actually, yeah, in total, we need 25 blues, 25 yellows and 25 reds. Okay. And interestingly enough, none of the colors are coming off in my hand. Oops. <clears throat> so far, so good. Let's try with the blue one. We're going to just put our finger back and forth. And the answer is nay. Okay. All right. Let's get you open. Oh, oh, are you not opening? Am I going to break this? Oh, this is not one to open. Are you okay? Oh gosh, this is going to break, isn't it? Hello? Why is this not one to open? Oh gosh. Is it not supposed to open? No, it is supposed to open. If we look at the instructions, it says that we can lift the plastic door. Oh no, don't break. Well, this is gonna break. Oh gosh, oh boy, oh boy. That is not opening. Oh goodness. Oh, 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 we got it. Oh, that was way more stressful than it should have been. All right, let's put our yellow, our red. Actually, no, that's not true. I wanna put yellow in the middle. There we go. There you go. And voila. We are very organized now. Don't take, don't, don't get weird now. There. Very nice. All right. Things are getting a little too pale here. So let's bring back, oh goodness, our trusty felt like a saw. And I did shake the paint. Now I don't know if it's going to work or not, but worst case scenario, again, this is just white base and we're going to work on that. So let's see what that looks like. Is it sealed? Yes, it is sealed for our safety. That is let's open it. Okay, maybe that's what it needed. Maybe it just needed some air. Watch it turn into powder. That would be interesting. <laughs> not really, but kind of. I almost want to see that. So this is like nine-year-old paint. Holy carp. Hello? There you go. Okay. It's low-key looking like yogurt. And... <coughs> you know, it doesn't smell too bad. It kind of smells like summer camp and, and sunscreen. But let's look on the inside. Yeah, that definitely looks goopy. I don't know if it's going to work, but it definitely looks questionable. Look at that. What if I twist it? If I go that way, will it move? No. That's bad news, Grains. That is bad news for us. It's not looking good. What's this? Oh, this is a cap. Okay, let's squirt a little bit. Wait a damn minute. <laughs> Paint, I mean. We're, we're squirting the paint. All right, so here we have a napkin. And are you going to squirt? 
Okay, you know what? That doesn't look bad. That definitely doesn't look as bad as I thought it would. So I'm gonna close this again, like so, and I'm gonna give it a little bit more shaking. All right, let's take one of our paint pots. And apparently they should have a line that says up to where we should be filling it. There's a fill line. Oh, interesting. So the fill line is much lower than I expected. It's really down here. Really? Well, that's that's not helpful at all. This black and white does not help. It says to fill it to the fill line, but I don't see it here. And then over there, my guess is that it is indeed lower. So we're going to go ahead and take a guess here because we want the colors to be as vibrant as possible. All right, so here's our paint pot. That definitely is not a good way to hold our paint. It's not very, not very secure. I mean, this is here, but it's not very secure. Still pretty wobbly, but Whatever. So our fill line is on the inside. Let's see if we can properly do this. I don't want any paint on my hat. It's really hard to see, but there we go. That is chonk. She is chonky paint. Oh my God. I think this is the fill line. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. Better to have less of the white and just more concentrated color, but we'll see how that goes. Actually, you know what? I still wanna try it with my own paint. And because, why, wow, that is bad design. That is bad design. You have a cap in the same place where this has to open. Is, that is a bad design. Let's go ahead and make a fully red one. So we're gonna make one of each color and then we're gonna start mixing. So we have five strips, let's go ahead and pull. Okay, one. They didn't say that we had to put one strip at a time. Wait a minute, is there plastic on this? What, wait, what? They didn't say there was plastic on that, what? They didn't say that. Wait a minute. Hang on, we have to remove you. Get back here. Oh no, stay here. Did they say that? No, they didn't. The only time they mention a plastic is it says lift clear plastic door. And then down here, remove paint strips to create desired color. They didn't mention there was plastic. You sons of biscuits. Unless the plastic is needed, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. This really does smell like summer camp and sunscreen, but okay. Wow, we did not have that information. I don't know if the plastic is needed or if it's a co compound that melts, but off we go. So here's another strip. There you go. We definitely ruined this, but whatever. Okay, in you go. You know what's missing? Toothpicks. We need something to make this go down. I don't think this melts. The answer is no, the plastic does not melt, but okay, let's use the plastic to push it down. Okay, let's do that. Push you in like a so. There, okay, that's good. All right, I'm gonna push you in. That's good to know. There's a plastic cover over it. It's like, figure it out. How do I know Crayola? Figure it out. Fine, I go, figure it out. Figure it out. Figure it out. Figure it out. That's a Crayola song, in, in case you're new here. Crayola does have a song. It just lets you figure things out. All right, let's close you back. And now the instructions say to put this at 11 o'clock, right? Hello, like this. Okay. And then twist it to 12 o'clock clockwise, like uh, so. Is that it? Okay. I guess that's it because this is locked in here and the cap here on top is held. Okay. And now we're supposed to do this for 30 seconds. So I'm supposed to just go in one direction. We're not supposed to move it around in multiple directions. So this, oh, are you okay? This was the most obnoxious kit. <laughs> Why is it so noisy? And I don't think the colors have mixed. Let's pull this out. Yeah, the colors definitely did not mix. Let's pull you out of here. Yeah, that is, that is a mess. That is a mess. Let's open it up. Oh no, I don't think the paint is goopy enough. I'm gonna take a Q-tip and we're gonna try this manually and then we're gonna try it with my own dollar, Whee! dollar store paint. So my guess is that this paint definitely needs to be goopier. Oh my God, look at that. Oh, that is pretty. Now, just because the paint is thick, it doesn't necessarily mean that it was going to be actually opaque. So it's possible that it could still be transparent. And look at that, the strips definitely wanted to melt. Is this a strip? Or is that a piece of goopy white paint? I can't tell, let's keep mixing. That was quick to mix. Okay, yeah, oh, gross, it smells so bad. <coughs> I hope there's no lead in there. Crayola, I'm gonna get it tested. You better watch out. 
Okay, yeah, I think I think that's pretty good. I think we got everything. Okay. So I went ahead and also made the yellow, but again, we're going to be using the Crayola base because we want to level that one up. And also went ahead and did the blue. I also want to be very clear. As you can see, I am using the machine, but at no moment does the machine actually work. The color strips though, they melt absolutely gorgeously, as you can see here when I'm mixing it all up. But the machine seems like more of a gimmick than something that actually works. And now that we have all of our our primary colors, we're going to go ahead and see how opaque or transparent it is. So I'm going to use a pencil and we're just going to write very lightly tests. Just so you know, this is light. This is hard, okay? And I'm not sabotaging it. So I'm gonna put here test and test. That way we get to test each color and see how transparent it actually is. And then after that, we're going to try the hack that actually uses cornstarch to see if we can actually make it more opaque. We're going to start off with red. I have to say the color does look pretty, but this brush is definitely wonky. So let's go ahead and take a generous amount. Wow, that is gross. That is really terrible. Oh my God. It's not even coating the brush. This is going to be a disaster, isn't it? You know what? It's not as bad as I thought. It's still terrible. And look at the streaks on this brush. This is terrible. This is really bad. And I just removed the exposure. So basically the exposure just makes things brighter. But in this case, I'm removing the brightness. So you can see the actual opaqueness, or in this case, transparency of the red. So this is what it looks like to me. So it's not that great. <laughs> Next one is yellow. I have a feeling yellow is going to be a lot more transparent, but let's go ahead and try that out. And the answer is also not as bad as I thought. This brush does not do any of them favor, I have to say. I really feel like taking out my other brush. And last but not least, the blue one. And again, the answer is not as bad as I thought. Definitely the brush is very streaky. It doesn't seem to hold any paint. I mean, that's, look at that. That is, that is one goopy the brush. Absolute trash. But you know what? I'm still curious with my own brush. So we're gonna take my own brush. And it's possible that these paints are just very streaky, so. Yeah. Yeah, these paints do not go a long way. Definitely better in terms of streakiness, you can see the difference. But yeah, let's try to level this up. And so now, according to online sources, such as on TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and on blogs, we should be combining one and a half cups of water with two tablespoons of cornstarch. Now, I don't need to make that many, so I'm going to do only half of this amount. And we're going to keep mixing that until it becomes a paste-like consistency. All right, so I figured this would be ready when this peak over here doesn't move. The entire thing has has been keeping its shape for the longest time. There's no water, nothing. It's just basically liquid form cornstarch. You can see, this is this is the real time. Look at that. It's jiggly, but it's not losing its shape. So I think this is the good way. So I added another test over here so we can see them side by side. So let's go ahead and take a little bit. They, it does say just put a little at a time so there's no actual measurement. Here's our red. Let's go ahead and scoop that stuff. That is, that is thick. I don't know how much, let's say this much. Oh gosh, don't fall. Right here, let's put that in there and let's go ahead and mix it up. And here's the red. I have to say, I'm surprised that the color didn't really change, but we're gonna see that on paper. It does feel thicker, but I didn't put too much. And off we go with the test to see what that's going to be like. And the answer is basically the same. It feels a lot smoother on paper. Oh my God, look at that. It's like the paint actually gives more. There's more going on here. It's still pretty translucent, but it definitely glides better on paper. Actually, you know what? Let's double check on that. And here's a side-by-side -side close up. Now I don't want to be biased, but I feel like the one on the right is a little darker for some odd reason, although it still is pretty transparent. It's possible it's darker because we can actually put a thicker layer, but then again, I, I'm not, I'm biased. Let me know what you observe in the comment section below. But for sure, you can see that the brush and the paint work really well together to give us more coverage. Now let's try with a good quality white paint. And for this one, I'm going to be using my Jacquard Neopaque paints. Now I absolutely love this paint because the coverage on it is chef's kiss. And I'm basically following the instructions, but using this one. So we're scooping a little bit in the pot and then we're going to be adding four reds and one yellow. The only reason I'm doing that is to make sure that we don't use all of the reds before we can do all the color matching. So we're getting as close as possible to that red. And I have to say the result is pretty unexpected. We got a really pretty pink. 
So I think the white is a little too strong for this pigment, so we might have to actually use less of the white. But it did work, so it is kind of cute. So let's go ahead and dab our paintbrush in here. And let's go ahead and put it right on top. And yeah, you could see <laughs> the test is gone. Yeah, it's not the same thing. Using cheap quality Crayola paint and using a good quality paint will not give you the same result. It is gone. It's a really pretty color though, but you can see the difference from the Crayola here and the Neopake from Jacquard. That is, that is just a pretty, pretty color. But I have to say, I am really surprised with the cornstarch because again, here it's dry. The color does look more vibrant. So if you still want to be budget, you can definitely add cornstarch to your cheaper paints and elevate the level a little bit more. But, but, a lot of online sources do say that the paint doesn't last when you add cornstarch to it. So if it's a piece that you really want to keep for yourself for a long time, don't use cornstarch. You might have to invest in better quality paint. Yeah, that, that test is just gone. Oh, and we were actually pretty curious to know whether the colors on the chart match the ones that we're making. So let's find out. So I set out to make the green color and an orangey red color. The process is exactly the same as we've been doing. And here we are dabbing it next to the one we actually made. And it seems a lot lighter than it should be. It actually seems closer in color to the one underneath it, despite the fact that we put the same amount required to make the one above. So that's weird. And let's check out this reddish orange. And I have to say that is actually pretty precise. Let's bring it next to here. It's actually pretty close. Could be either or. So yeah, colors are not exactly specific. So my verdict on the Crayola paint maker, definitely no. The paint color strips are really cool. So if you can find a refill for these, definitely get them to play around with your own paint. But the machine itself is just a gimmick because it does not work. So in essence, that machine does go. In the trash. Despite the fact that it is pretty fun to play with, I would just get the strips. If you want to watch a previous Crayola review, make sure you check up here. And if you want to watch something a little bit more crafty or maybe even surprise boxes, make sure you check over here. Until then, I will see you grins in the next video.